come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Hopefully this is your return trip to the Saturday Night Freak Show. But if this is your first time, welcome. Hello. We're a group of internet radio superstars, only because we say we are. Yeah, we're a group of something. We sit around and watch movies every Saturday night. Then we sit around and talk about them afterwards. And we record our thoughts for your entertainment and listening pleasure. Who are the internet radio superstars, you ask? Travis. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. And I uh, just want to remind you that uh, we're doing a thing right now where we are doing going to be doing a listener's choice uh, uh, series of reviews on the Saturday Night Freak Show coming up probably in January. And so what we want to do, we want to hear from you. And thanks to all of you who have already submitted your suggestions. But what you want to do is go on over to our Facebook page. Will uh, voting be over by the time this airs? No, we're still going to leave it open. One more week after this? Uh, this this week, as you're listening okay. to it right now, this week we're leaving it open, and then we're going to try and uh, narrow down the field and figure out what we're going to watch. But we are going to watch some of the suggested movies uh, in January. So Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, it's pinned to the top, the listener's choice. Uh, comment on that, and we will uh, probably, we're going to watch some of those movies. So uh, let us know what you'd like to hear us talk about. Uh, this week... It was my pick. And so I chose the movie Cat People from 1982, directed by Paul Schrader, who previously wrote the script for Taxi Driver. Uh. It kind of feels like, you know, how did this guy end up doing Cat People for Universal Pictures? Indeed. He also did, uh, prior to this, he did a movie called American Gigolo. Uh, with Richard, Richard Gere, Gere. Mm. and subsequently did a movie called Hardcore, which I really like, which you should check out, with one of my all-time favorite actors, George C. Scott. Mm. And then he got back into the horror uh, field by, uh, he did the original version of The Exorcist 4, The Exorcist The Beginning, hey. the one that was completely redone by the, Ronnie Harlan. The one no one saw. Is that what it's called? The version no one saw? And the other ones, the one no, no one fucking gave a shit about The Exorcist <laughs> when those movies came out. Like, I saw them both. What a waste of money that they redid that. Well, that's the thing, because the second one, or the original version, is not any better than the Rennie Harlan version. <laughs> is this the one that came out recently? Like 10 It's years like ago? Exorcist the Beginning? Like an 05 Dominion? or something, right? Is Dominion the, is, Dominion the, is the other one. Version. Was it 04, okay. 05? Something, something like so that. So it's yeah. the same movie, but. Two people, like, they did it and then redid it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's significantly but it different, same. but it's about the same idea. One of them goes big Hollywood special effects, and the other one goes, like, low-key drama. But either way, it's like neither about one of them. equal quality. Yeah, yeah. Neither one of them is really worth your time. Um, and so, Colin watched them both. And I watched them both. Yeah, well, I mean, you know. Somebody's got to. As a horror movie historian, you have to do these kind of things. Um, so... Just to get us two cat people, Universal Pictures, who was famous in the 1930s for doing a series of horror movies, including Dracula, Frankenstein, The Wolfman, etc. Um, in the early 80s, um, got the idea that, hey, we're going to like remake some of these movies that have been like in our possession, either that they had made or had acquired the rights to or whatever. Mm including Dracula, Frankenstein, they did the thing, Cat People. Um, all of these were done because of the the revolutionary, you know, special effects technologies that came after uh, the success of Star Wars. And the original was 40 what? Two? I think we were saying it was 42, but it was a RKO Pictures movie, not a Universal yeah. uh, movie. It was... They were the cheaper kind of ripoff guys. Yeah, um... More exploitation. Well, there was a there was a film producer named Val Luton. Maybe you've heard this name if you're into yes, horror I have at heard all. That name. He's one of the the few guys where the producer is more famous than the director mm -hmm. of the movie. Like you know, he's known for a certain kind of tone and atmosphere where he would do all these things that were basically like very uh, suggestive of horror without actually being very explicit. You know. And so he had a French guy named Jacques Tournay, Tourneur, 
who actually directed uh, the 1942 cat. Oh, Jacques Trineau? <laughs> Jacques Trineau? What did you say? Is it Trineau? Uh, I'm not entirely sure how I you I think pronounce. I know who you're talking Jacques about. Jacques yeah. Tutite? Yeah. And the guy that wrote it, that DeWitt, uh, what was his last name? DeWitt, yeah. Baba Boy, Babu, Babu. Dean, Bajin, Bajin. It was like uh, DeWitt, Baba, uh, Baby. DeWitt, DeBowen. <laughs> No, Bo- DeWitt Bodine. 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 That's right, Bodine. I was trying to remember that. Bodine. But uh, supposedly, uh, the original Wolfman script written by Kurt C. Odmack originally didn't involve Larry Talbot turning into a wolf. It was supposed to be psychologically suggested that he turns into a wolf. And then they're like, fuck it. Let's do the makeup. Let's do a universal monster, right? And so Cat People was supposed to be a ripoff of the original Kurt C. Odmack script where we're not going to show a transformation. This is all going to be a psychological thing. And which is weird because that screenwriter, like he uh, ripped on Kurt C. Odmack script and then made a, a complete ripoff, like just a more sexual ripoff. Right. It's like, that's a bunch of bullshit. Put some tits in it. Now we're talking. That's a movie. A classic horror film. Sexual ripoff is a great uh, 80s band name. Oh, my God. Sexual yes. ripoff. Yes. Sexual ripoff. Yes. I like that. <laughs> Sexual ripoff. Copyright 2016 Saturday Night Freak Show. Funny. I've, always, I've often wondered, like, you know, watching The Wolf, man, I've often wondered what it would play like. Because you could cut those scenes of him running around in the, make, you know, the hairy suit yeah. out and still have a movie. All he does is choke people. Yeah, <laughs> and then it wakes up the next. Yeah, ne- wakes up the next day, and then the movie resumes. Like, yeah. what have I done the night before? There's people dead. Did I or did I not turn into a? Are you telling a me that a man exactly. can turn into a beast? No, I say it's fantastic. Yeah, but so the original movie stars a woman named Simone Simon. Whoa! Yeah, she's that's very nice. pretty. Okay. Yeah, Simone. She's Simon. obviously a spy. <laughs> And it was uh, a story, well, I mean, I guess this is going to cover the basic story of, of both of these movies, but she's a woman who, and this is in the original, right, is like possibly mentally unbalanced. Uh, she believes that if she has, if she has sex with someone, uh, she's going to turn into a cat. And the only way that she can become human again, I'm not sure if that's in the original or in can the Can I sequel, explain the parable to the audience? She She'll get turned out. She'll completely become a whore if she has sex with one like I can't do it once or else whew, it's just going to the shit. It's going to hit the fan. I'm going to sleep with everybody in town. Isn't that a weird parable? That's what it is. Well, it's like, I can't. No, I can't. Release the demon, you know. Well, is it that or is it just the, like, a metaphor or analogy for, like, animal passion? The idea that, like, when you are in the midst of lovemaking, you are at your most. But she knows that, like, even if I sleep with my husband, I'm like, no, 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 no. If this thing, this thing's going good between us. Like, if I start having sex, you know? Yeah. 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 And, but that's more of a, I think that's more of a fear of man, right? You know, the same way. You know, the werewolf parable's always been like, oh, if a dude lusts after a chick, you know, he could, you know, he could get so riled up that he could rape her. So there's the werewolf metaphor, right? So this is man's fear of like, oh, if a woman has sex once, dude, forget it, you know, like, oh, you know, she'll just become a whore and like, it's still, it's a man fear. Man fear. Man fear. Man fear. Well, same, same thing with like, uh, it's the same thing with the, the Dracula. If you listen to our episode a few weeks ago, I always say, you know, Dracula, it's the fear of another, a foreign man coming in and sweeping your woman off her feet. And Yeah. I imagine the uh, the 1942 version, uh, when they change it to cats, they're tiny house cats. Because it's the same time. That's, <laughs> yes. that's what I imagine. I think it's just uh, a shadow, it, right? Yeah. Is it original? really? There is a leopard Meow. in the in the zoo, I believe. In because uh, the there is an escape version. zoo. There is an escaped leopard, and that's why she's like, "Is that me? Am I turning into a cat?" Yeah. They're like, "No, idiot. People don't turn into cats." But in the forty-two, <laughs> when she actually does get married to the zookeeper Oliver, yeah. and then they don't consummate the relationship because she's you know uh, afraid of it. 
And I think there's a scene, I remember it, where she's like, you know, he's on one side of the door and she's on the other side and she slinks down to her knees, you know, like face up against the door kind of thing. It's about as like, you know, erotic as you can get for 1942, right? You know, (laughs) there's this uh, passion on either side of the door. Is there any in between, like if there's oral sex, she like grows paws and that's it? She's just a human walking around with paws? Or is it like go full or not at all? I don't think it's It's only psychological in the original. Just wondering. Well, in the this original, I don't remember like, how the original it, Let's throw is. that out and let's have Panthers fuck people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's what the opportunity you're afforded in the 80s is that you can be more explicit, A, both in content and in your visual effects. All right, so in the 1980s... <laughs> the visual movie, effects were tremendous in this movie. Oh, yeah? yeah, really? Well, no, were they? <laughs> Was are you talking about just the undraped figure of Nastasha Kinski? That uh, we'll never was know. pretty. It's a sex when it's not. <laughs> it's a sexy movie when it's not I'm sorry, being. Were you saying when, so it's, <laughs> when it's not being rapey with uh, Malcolm McDowell and whatnot? Oh, yeah. That whole thing, the brother and sister thing. It's a very sexy movie. I will say that. That's a weird addition. <laughs> I must say. Yeah, yeah. I so, never, like... Like, did they have to be brother and sister? It doesn't... It's, it's, it's it could, very, it could be like, of a, we are this of a adds like a whole, no, like... like, we are brother and sister. This adds a mythology of, of cat fuckers or something like that. You know, we start the movie off with cat fuckers, a woman getting tied to a tree... And I just knew it. I'm like, oh no, this is not a sacrifice. God damn it! <laughs> How did you know that? It's just because I knew. Because I'm like, because when I was a kid and saw it, I thought that when the cat jumps up on her, I thought that was the cat, you know, eating her. No, it was very gentle. Plus, yeah, just like licking her ear. Plus, I understood. Uh, from documentaries, I understood how the original was a psychological, so the, a psychological parable or whatever. So then when I saw this just open, I'm like, oh, shit. They threw the parable out the window, and they're just going with, like, that's right, people. Buckle up. Way back in Africa, people used to have sex with panthers. And somehow the, the soul of the, like, the panthers get impregnated with the human soul, and the soul grows within them. This is a mythology that's doled out later on in a well, dream it, scene. It did movie. say that they sacrifice people to the panthers. So, mm. it's just a different kind. I'm assuming, I mean, what you thought was right, like, it is supposed to be eating it. But that's like the, what, the further down the line, we're seeing the down the line where it already like knows that it has human souls and can have sex and that could even been a human for all we know yeah we don't even know if that panther at the beginning was just like a stupid panther god or something where that could have been a human at the panther tree been. that way out yes. in Africa. it's a panther tree it's a panther tree, panther tree. a panther yeah. tree <laughs> i'm never gonna watch the lion king the same way again yeah so a descendant of these panther fuckers uh, is <laughs> this woman named Irene. I think that's what they were called. Panther, panther fuckers? Panther, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, they got the guys, all, you know, like, I like the fact that the natives are tattooed or yes. painted with leopard, leopard leopards, spots. Yeah. That way you know, hey, we're with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so don't eat us. Don't eat us. Us too, girl. right, guys? Us yes. too. <laughs> <laughs> but Irina uh, uh, arrives in uh, New Orleans and uh, is... So, okay, so the, she has been in foster homes since the age of four, or something like this, we learned, right? Yeah. Yes. We've learned this. Her parents were circus folk that raised cats. Yes. Lion And tamers. for some reason, yes. she, for some reason, she had, like, no... Well, they killed themselves. They killed themselves. Yeah, ah, they killed themselves. Right. And her brother was 10, she was four, so they were both shipped off to foster families. And he landed in New Orleans and became a preacher. Apparently, yeah. Yeah, that's he right, preacher? right? He was yeah. like a preacher? Yeah. yeah. That's the weird thing about this movie, right? I did. I thought this movie was going to be like a, have like a heavy religious tone to keep her from her sexuality. Because like the first thing you see in the airport is someone passing out the lighthouse, right? Mm-hmm. Which that's the uh, Jehovah's Witness thing, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, and it's really like, I mean, it's not like an important part of the story, but I mean. The audio makes the it person, blatant. Yeah, yeah, the person center yeah. stage. He yells at everybody mm-hmm. as yeah. they walk by. And he had the, the collar on when he met her at the airport. Yeah, Malcolm McDowell. Yeah. 
Oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah, he had I the collar the on. Thing. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I was, there I was too busy concentrating on how close he was to her for being his her brother. So yeah. Close. Yeah. That's when you get the impression that something is amiss in this family. Uh, yes. Yeah. Attendance. He doesn't even amiss. hide it. He's just, like, looking just, like, at her like, just wait her. till tonight. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's there's a great scene where he takes her back to the, his house, this big yeah. sprawling like New Orleans mansion, right? And he's got this uh, live-in housekeeper named Fimali, mm. which I love that story too. Yeah, was, right? I like that. That was good. Her what name is that? if it's female, or I guess somebody uh, like when they were delivering her, they just said she was female, gotcha. and whoever you know didn't speak the language of Fimali, so now Fimali. like Tamali, Fimali. Mm-hmm. But there's a scene at the dinner table where uh, Irina is telling, you know, Paul, her brother, uh, you know, like about her experiences up until this point. Somehow they've been reunited. He found her yeah. somehow and then has brought her to New Orleans. And when you're watching Famali's face, mm-hmm. like this is where it's like, you know, like she knows what where this is eventually going to go. That, you yeah. know, I mean, the, the idea is that uh, for these cat people. The only people that they can have sex with are each other, incestuously brother and sister pairs, like apparently their uh, parents, parents because if they don't, then they will turn in, you know, the act of lovemaking turns them into a panther, and the only way that they can become a human again is by killing uh, mm-hmm. someone. So, but watching Famali's face in that scene, because uh-huh. she's like, you know, I used to fantasize about you, and he's like, fantasize Fantasized. about me, and you see Famali is going like, She's got the oh shit face. Yeah, her so, eyes are yeah, like, Lord, oh, another boy. one. Yeah, I would do at that dinner. I'd be like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> People are fucking yeah. seriously? This is oh, I got stuck with this family. I'll never know. <laughs> yeah. I was like that watching this movie. As soon as a movie becomes incestuous, I get like, what? <laughs> like, I automatically have to like, like, I, it's hard for me to like even watch those movies because I'm just like, I can't buy this. This is crazy. <laughs> He's like, Colin promised me a sexy movie and now there's a brother and a sister in it. Yeah, and that's been ruined. a sexy movie. <laughs> God damn it. It was like, oh. Yeah. Get out of there, lady. Although I'll say that they cast like two perfect cat people in this. Yes. I mean, Nastasia Kinski. Natasha? N- Nastasia. Nastasia Kinski. Nastasia. And Malcolm McDowell. I mean, if you're going to pick people who, like, move and look like cats. It's the eyes. Yeah, I mean, you totally buy yeah. it, right? And it's like, okay, these are cat people. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Look at those. We're looking at the look at poster, mouth. the poster it's art, which mouth. I maintain is one of the sexiest movie posters of all time. I think it's just because but of the water the and original, whatever. Is that like, even the original poster? Because I thought originally is a purple it one. the side, like, isn't it her laying down with the, with cat? the side of her face with like a red planes? I thought that was no, like the VHS it's always been. Face. It's either been this one or there's one that has like the cat tree in the background. It's like that's, a that's probably the, I guess the one. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong about her positioning. You should check this poster out, folks. It's a breath- but, okay. breathtaking it's image. A breathtaking. Natasha Kinski or Nata- Nastasha? Nastasia. She's the daughter of <laughs> Klaus Kinski. Do any of you guys know who Klaus is? He's the madman actor of German cinema. He did a lot of movies with Werner Herzog. He was uh, Nosferatu, the vampire. And, no. Oh, and really? Gloria, the Wrath of God. Fitzcarraldo, yeah. where they carried ah. the... Yeah, okay. No. He ended up in movies like Creature and Crawl Space before his death. <laughs> Wait, he played oh. Nosferatu? Yeah. He oh, was okay. The, in the, what, the 60s, the 70s 79. version? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Werner Herzog. The Werner okay. Herzog. Yeah. Now Nosferatu <laughs> comes into the window and sees his prey. Um, hello, Werner. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't see. Oh, uh, hello. <laughs> Good talk. Um, <laughs> my problem with this movie is there's like almost no. It's like okay, the mystery you're supposed to have is like, uh, Malcolm McDowell kind of like casually hits on his fucking sister, <laughs> and then he's just like, "Fine, I gotta get out of here," and then, then we just go to a hooker, a happy hooker showing up. Mm. Lynn Lowry from uh, Shivers. I Shivers. really. Yeah, okay. They came from within. Cool. It's an alternate title. The okay. Cronin. Yeah. The weird, Cronin sexy Cronin. AIDS. Uh, 
the cannibal weird, movie. Sexy weird AIDS, sexy AIDS. Cannibal it's movie. the uh, blood Why parasite we watching movie. That? Oh, you got to see it's this movie at some point. It's yeah. insane. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not even sure if there's a story in that movie. It's just people in bikinis running around fucking each other and eating each they other. They become sex maniacs when they get a parasite inside them that's exchanged through bodily transmission. It needs a it's remake, like a big, trust yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, put it on Sounds the list, perfectly <laughs> fine to me. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, I thought that too when I was like 14. Like I'm like, this, what is, this is going again? to be the best night ever. There's a they scene come from that, within? Uh, yeah. It's called but, Shivers. 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 Oh, I heard uh, Shivers. Okay. But there's a scene with Barbara Steele in a bathtub, and something mm. comes out of the bathtub. The pool. Slithers up. The pool. Up. Yeah, I remember the Barbara pool. Barbara Steele in a bathtub. Gross. And, yeah. But so this, so <laughs> Malcolm McDowell. <laughs> <challenge. laughs> so there's just a hooker who's. Uh, you know, she's Going like... Going through the motions as she gets in the room? Well, she just goes into a room and Explaining she's talking the menu. to a... You know, someone's in the bathroom, right? And she's just like, hey, $25 for a massage, blah, blah, blah. And... Uh, and she steals their money. Surprise, surprise. There's a cat under the bed. First okay. of all, there's cat something. Oh, yeah, cat goo. Oh, well, cat we goo. find out that that's transformation news. Transformation news. We'll see. Yeah. Yes, when you yeah. transmogrify, transmogrify yes. from a human to a cat... All right, so but here's the question. I still I like this movie. Don't get me wrong, don't but I don't understand this. He didn't have sex with anyone. How do you turn into a cat? Uh, Malcolm McDowell is able to do this multiple times in the movie. Whenever he is aroused, apparently he can turn into it's so a strong. panther. Yeah, without <laughs> actually having sex with someone, because he does it. Is, with he a pre- Irina. is he a premature cat person? Is that what it is? <laughs> is, that, is that what it is? Premature catulation? <laughs> Maybe you yeah, can jack so off and be a cat person. There you go. I don't know. Any sexual he, gratification? Any sort of release. Yeah. Maybe that's... Waiting for the hooker, he turns into a cat person. When he confronts Irina at uh, John Hurd's house later on, he turns into a cat person. Yeah, she, gotta... she stabs him with the yeah, glass. That's true. How can he does seem to have it? some sexual problems. According when he's with the blonde later, yeah. he can't yeah. get it up. So. I mean, yeah. can you learn to control it if you're yeah. a cat person? Does it not necessarily have? I mean, if you are a cat person, can you just turn at will? It's just the fact that when you have sex, you have to turn. So it's like their full moon, right? Maybe. Like action movies would have you believe a werewolf can just transform whenever they get into fights with vampires or whatever fuck at any moment. But you should, but under the full moon, you are compelled, right? So is that what they're trying to say? Are they trying to sell you? You could turn into a cat, but you have to turn into a cat if you. Have yeah, I'm not I mean, that's got to be sure. it. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, or yeah, else because it doesn't make just, sense. Which it could totally not make sure. sense. And I will give that yeah. in this movie, yeah. right? I don't well, because there's it, there's the part where he's he's talking to his sister and he's like when you have these feelings and he's describing the things that are happening to her, he's like, you think it's arousal, you think it's love, it's not, it's the animal. And I, I think that's kind of their way of saying that just the arousal part portion is what brings it out. So it could, depending on how strong the feeling is, is yeah. how is is the, the um, probability of them turning into the cat. But probably. he always that's why changes he yeah. within like a proximity of some kind of sexual mm-hmm. act or advance. Yeah. I mean, yeah. with the hooker. He's know, very sensitive. He that is this guy's him. only goal in the movie is like, he's like, hello, my sister. Come see my house. Have sex with me. Have sex with me. Please. <laughs> but he just can't broach the subject he, on the first night. No, so. he's not you even like. You gotta ease her into that shit. Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, the first night he's like, come look at our our family's childhood stuff. Whatever. Then he's like sniffing her hair and shit. Or what does he do? He kind of like gives her a little. Creepy. Like, yeah. uh-huh. They're very cat-like. Uh-huh. Really it's like, creepy. God damn. <laughs> Yeah, but, but then he things, wanders like, oh, off, right? Like yeah, right yeah, away, he, he wanders off. off, kills the hooker, or sorry, he uh, yeah, uh, kills turns the into a panther. Doesn't kill the hooker. You're right. He gets. They bring out. Oh, the, that's uh, right. Gets her leg. Yeah. She runs yeah. down the stairs. And she has the amazing <laughs> fine. The bra the that just like by, on remote <laughs> it control was nice. pops open. Well, this Paul Schrader guy's a creep. Yeah, cue the bra. Cue the bra. I have to tell you that he's a creep. I mean, if it's now there, I see there's a reason why he wrote about an underage hooker and taxi driver. I will say, Paul Schrader's a creep. If it's a front closure bra, that can happen. But it was just amazing. And I'm not complaining. Like if you're yawning too hard, you're just like, oh, 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 mm-hmm. shit. My bad. You'd be surprised. <laughs> That's why they designed those. Yeah, you'd, you'd be surprised. It was but, very interesting. But in the scene, would it happen? <laughs> like if that, if you were just like, 
We need it a commentary like a track. Heavy accident. She's there is yeah. kind of track hobbled down the stairs on her stomach. I mean, it's not it's unlikely. True. If there is a commentary track on this that uh, addresses that, that moment, addresses it, yeah. then that is the best commentary. Because <laughs> that's what I want from commentary track when they address moments like that that happen. That yeah. was an accident when that actress is that was not an out. accident. <laughs> that was like but, that, that took uh, five takes to get yeah. that. Correct. It was kind of sped up a little bit, so you could tell it was like a because uh, they cut out a few frames. Like yeah, like get it open. God damn it. Well, this it gives the opportunity to introduce the next set of characters in the movie, which is John Hurd as a uh, as Oliver, the uh, curator of the local zoo. Yep. His girl Friday, uh, Annette, Annette O'Toole, was, Annette O'Toole, O'Toole. Alice, like and the wonderful Annette O'Toole, and Bagley Junior. That's right, Ed Bagley Junior. Ed Bagley Junior. As Fucking the red despicable. shirt. Yeah, 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 it's the red shirt. The red shirt. <laughs> I don't even know his name. Uh, Fucking Swedish no. red shirt. I have no idea what his name was. Billy? No clue. Yeah. So they all take this, they Bailey. get this uh, a panther. Just trapped in the hotel trapped room. Trapped in the hotel room. Which is a pretty cool scene with things like freaking out, you know, when they try yeah. to They had it. to freak a panther out in a hotel room. They, they <laughs> did indeed. <laughs> what are we doing today? Oh, boy. Yeah. Seriously, the animal cruelty had to have been just out of the window on That's this one. That's not cruel. Yeah, did you guys stick around to see if it even, like, bothered to, to have a... <laughs> Oh, those animals were they, fine. All, all it said this was, was yeah, there were animals just in this movie. It freaked out in the hotel room, but it still was able to run and jump around. They tranquilized it, sure, but the animals get tranquilized all the time. All and the there's time. a couple of sedated uh, cougars, panthers, to leopards, one. whatever the hell they are. <laughs> I don't know about that. that yeah, cool. right. Um, but yeah, so they take the animal back to the zoo, and it ends up that Irina ends up there as it gets a job through Oliver. Because she's staring at the panther just, late into the night. Yeah. I guess you're supposed to assume this is what why this movie is kind of bad in my mind, right? It's because I guess you're she's in a taxi and she's supposed to like feel the call of the wild and have to like I have to go to the zoo. But it just I mean she has the I have to go to the zoo, but you don't feel the psychological like you know I don't even know what would you do. Ah, ah, I have a bunch of sound monkey sounds and <laughs> like it's always monkeys. Zoo sounds like yeah, monkeys and parrots. That's the call of the wild. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's the a jungle. couple call of the wilds going on here because this is where Oliver uh, develops his uh, the beginning of a sexual obsession, right? Which is actually I think what yeah. this movie is about, right? Yeah. Indeed. Where this is a guy <clears throat> who becomes so obsessed with this woman who he can't have sex with. She refuses to have sex with him, basically, the entire way through the movie. But it takes a while to get there. Like, he's not just jumping at the fat. I mean, well, no, I guess he is, right? Because their first day, he starts filling her up. And I was like, whoa, this guy, it's he's a boss. Because <laughs> his first date or the first it was date, the, they went out. They went, the, they went out to. They dinner. went out for oysters for Dude, God's their sake. first kiss. Right, he yeah, kissed her, did. then started grabbing her tits. I was like, "This guy's the man!" Like he doesn't <laughs> even wait for like. I don't think they had that, no, the first. No, that felt like a that little was, later on. That was their little. The first like, one was oysters. Weekend and then, away. I'm telling you, I think I think uh, after the oysters, they went and kissed, and then he like. Wah, wah. No, that no, was later that on. Was like the, they yeah. go later on, and he takes her may, to the may the be. wood hut shack he built on the river. May, and, maybe I thought yeah. he was. Then there's just, some boob grabbing. There's some time. There's a, a little bit of time in there. Oh, yeah. so. know, like man. She works at the gift shop. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure it was their first kiss because I noted that in my head. That like, holy fuck, guy's a beast, dude. Like the first kiss, then just tits right after. Well, I know that there is some. Maybe it's uh, not the first date. I think it's a little later, yeah. But it's the. It was still. Yeah, it was no, still the... a kiss, and then ten seconds later, it was. He was like, "Let's fuck." It's like, God well, damn, dude. He Almost did basically. pretty. He did pretty much tell her what was about to happen. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> I called it out, and I was just like, I was joking, and he's just like, "Nope, there it is." What yeah. you do? Just and it kind of has a kind of sort of relationship between him and Annette O'Toole. Even though she has dialogue about how you yeah. can just be friends and have fun, so that's why it's like. So I get the idea that she's like a side piece. Well, yeah, the seven, the, like the seventies, just got over, so everybody's still well, just la- fucking even around. Later on, AIDS has it hit. Even so. later on, she makes the comment. She says, "I thought you were in love before, but that might have just been my vanity." Like, mm. so it insinuates that there was a relationship, mm-hmm. something, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they had like that's what it feels like that they had some kind of casual, yeah. you know, uh, romantic relationship, you know. I mean, it's like that never really goes away, even through the course of the movie. Right. I mean, yeah. she is the one that he relies on. Like, you know, if uh, at some point, I think he even brings her over when Irina is in the house. To yeah. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, they're making coffee and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. 
And yeah. he sends, you know, obviously she uh, tr- takes it upon herself to try and get to know Irina in the gift shop and yeah. takes her out for drinks afterwards and whatever, <sighs> where they're hit on by a couple of guys. Irina's always being hit on by guys. In the s- bus station or on the bus or at the bar. I mean, that also becomes, I think, like a... I they don't can know if sense it's a, it. That one lady is that what it is? That's what it is. I was gonna say this is that the theme of it. Yes. She's just a yeah. magnet. Yeah. The they one lady it. in the bar never I assume she's so also a cat person, but the yeah, one lady yeah. in the bar who's just like Mi hermana. Mi hermana. Yeah. Like I'm assuming that that is another cat person that she just happened to run across. Yeah. It has to be. It's, it has to be. It's shot in a weird way I where wonder, the, was the that woman a... only seems to appear in the mirror. Mm-hmm. Like and that's a callback to the forty two movie. I was gonna say, who was it? I don't know who the actress was, was but s- that moment occurs oh, yeah? in, the, in the 42 movie. I was going to say, I wonder if that actress is somebody from the original movie. That'd be interesting. But that's the thing, like, in the original the movie, it. you know, it's like this adds to, if this she, is yeah, the, if this is the, young. if this is the psychological, you know, if the original movie in, being in a psychological 42, she probably drama, would have only been 18. I'm just like, <laughs> but, you know, having this woman come up and approach her, you know, adds that layer of like you know well am i crazy or is this actually happening because someone has acknowledged you know that i like i feel like i'm different this is what you know the cat person says yeah. and at this point someone comes up and actually says you're my sister you know it's like we so should fuck that puts it <laughs> that should <laughs> be the next sentence they, yeah they we don't know if like the lesbian thing like happens in this if, if it was sisters you know then what happens i don't know we don't get that it's, it's not <laughs> a sequel that explores this in detail this doesn't happen uh, okay cat sisters <laughs> oh my god you guys would lose your minds <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so everybody's drawn the to women's the women's prison movie for some reason except maybe annette o'toole doesn't seem to actually like go into heat around arena but all the no. male characters seem to I actually kind of questioned it when they were at the bar and she made the comment about sometimes she says she's a lesbian. There was like that exchange between them. For a minute, I thought that things might go that direction. Yeah, she I was just saying too. that is like to ward off like... No, I know what she was saying, but just yeah. the feeling between... There I, was that feeling. Of, I kind of mm, was like, mm, they could go that direction right now. It's the 80s. I could see that happening. If this is a modern day remake, they would... Women try to save eggs for themselves so women will be like... Forget guys, they're mine. <laughs> you know that's what it is. <laughs> I I think that is what it is. She does like that. Like I mean, she's not telling her don't fuck with Oliver, but she's just being like, oh guy, you know, we're all these people. Mm. She probably also takes her out to kind of get the get the information on her and kind of see how she feels about Oliver. She's right. just there to get information on yeah. her as well, yeah. to be like, what's your situation happening here? Yeah, because it's like, it, it doesn't read as, you know, that she's jealous in that no. scene. No. Although no, that she becomes a thing later well, that's on. Why she genuinely, like, wants to get to know her, and they yeah. seem, like, friendly. Well, I think that's why it's genuinely weird later, when all of a sudden she's just like, you're trying to kill me! It's just like, okay, everything was, like, somewhat all right with you guys. Like, you don't know she's a cat. No. Well, yeah, this movie was all over the fucking place. It was kind of all over the place. Like, they're yeah. trying to lay yeah, psychological really. things with each other, but the yeah. movie's not doing well, it. There's chunks yeah. that feel like there's... there's when we, she goes back and we've... <clears throat> um, when she meets up with uh, Malcolm McDowell again, like, the last time she saw him, they were having a, uh, as normal a relationship as those two can have. Sure. And then he pops back in later at night, and then all of a sudden they're very, like declarative and standoffish and he just goes straight for it like mm-hmm. <coughs> we have to make love well, what the it, fuck now but what it establishes is when and this is what's kind of in, you know when you're trying to work out the mythology and how this like magical thing actually you oh, know, it's magic. It takes place uh, he's been in the zoo yeah. as a leopard apparently and he kills uh, Ed Bagley Jr. in a fairly spectacular gore scene. Oh, very nice. Just like, Jesus nice. Christ. Yeah. Rips the guy's arm right out of his socket. Like the blue blood sea. splashes against say, I saw her coming virginal as as starts, white shoes. Like, strapping the, the Why do you do that? to his arm. Why do you strap a That's exactly arm? my point, to get dragged in. <laughs> yeah, into the cat cage. It was his yeah. electric yeah. Yeah, prod. So the animal doesn't take the prod? Yeah. But ends well, up yeah. Arm. But he's been, it's, it's, yeah, while it's, he's in the leopard form, apparently he is conscious in some way. Like when he returns to a human form, he does have those memories because yes. he says, and I he think that's why, with why he becomes so declarative. As you're saying, when he comes back, 
he's like, I thought, you know, you weren't ready, but you are. I saw you with Oliver. And right. so basically, like, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, you she do get have that? sex with dudes. Yeah, or you want to. <laughs> yeah. You know, he Just can, not me. Yeah. <laughs> Because they can sense I'm your brother. That's not your brother, huh? But this is oh, the thing. Oh, big. Es- <laughs> well, it's established that like she can see- tell what animals feel like or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's a cat person. She can feel the... So Snakes are green or, or purple or whatever. Are you talking red. about the... Uh, well, because when she's in front of the cage, she's, she says, well, he's scared. She can feel yeah. his fear kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I think then the, the reverse is also true. He can sense he her can feel that she's desire. Horny. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's like, okay, so you're totally ready. Well, remember for this. what so Carrie spring this said, idea yeah. on you? <laughs> that we have when to the go blood to bed. starts, you can smell it. Oh, they can smell. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good God! It happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, the they uh, bears. <laughs> I remember <laughs> but you were saying about uh, uh, a scene that, like, you know, where the movie was all over the place. Uh, there was a scene where while we were sitting here, like, you guys were like. What just fucking happened here? It was like an editing technique that I guess hasn't been done in a while or something. They We were at uh, Paul's house, and he chases Arena out of the house. Yes. She runs yeah. out and can, finds these cops and flags them down and says, somebody's chasing me. And then she's out in front of the house saying, you know, I'm sorry, you know, I must have been crazy or whatever. And a cop with a canine unit comes up, and the dog's barking, and they're like, well, we should check it Better out. Check then it, out. it cuts to, and this is where everybody was like, what's happening? It cuts to... A new uh, character who's a black detective. Barney from Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> yes. Frankie yes. Fiesa. And it, so this is about, like, two, three hours later. Yeah. All of a like, sudden, they've already yeah. searched the house. They've already called for backup. They've like, already all found the shit stuff. They've happened. already yeah. formulated a story. Like, so make sure a dog doesn't bark outside your house, because they will dig in your basement for <laughs> hours. <laughs> like, it's got to be something. I don't know what. Could be drugs. Could be a dead body. A bunch yeah. of going in that there. house. Uh, uh, and they had Oliver and Oliver Alice and were there Alice, again. Yeah. Like... Yeah, and like everybody showed up in one cut. So yeah. then they're like, yeah, that's the what's cops really are explaining weird. Explaining it to Oliver and Alice, basically. Right. Well, because oh, because the idea is like, what you're supposed to get from it is is the leopard escape from the zoo. Therefore, they think they find that maybe uh, uh maybe the brother's been keeping the escaped leopard well, right and feeding yeah. people to with it. the chain and the thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And for yeah. some reason, yeah. you're yeah. like yeah. cops will just be like. Call the zoologist on every case we have. Well, yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's, it's a small town. It's like, uh, can yeah. we do this over the phone? Yeah. Like, like, yeah, no, the dude gets there, tosses some bones around, and he's like, yup. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's dead. <laughs> it's like, thank God we It's not as good here. as the moment from Pieces. <laughs> can you tell if a chainsaw did this? <laughs> yeah. Well, even a layman can tell that this <laughs> weapon <laughs> cut these people up into, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. But, yeah, it's kind of weird. So, Paul is actually, like, a serial killer of some type, <laughs> yeah. right? He's been killing people down Using in the Using an escaped leopard that just escaped the night before. Because he, like, is, he is the leopard. Well, yeah, but they don't know I know, they that. don't know. Yeah, yeah. It drives me crazy. Right, he can kill people. That's called a, a fucking... Fine. But this is kind of like, it's like, uh, oh. I mean, I guess there's a wolf man kind of thing going on here where Famali is his familiar, you know, Renfield kind of thing, right? That she must Keep chain her. him up. In the basement and then yeah. feed him people? I don't know. In order to turn him people? Into- <laughs> yeah, I guess people? so. Yeah. Large dogs. Yeah. Women. They have to be women. Yeah. I guess that's true. I never thought that should be in on it, but I guess you're right. She had to she be. She's arrested yeah. for it. Yeah. Well, she knows. she knows. Like they, they make that obvious. That she they knows got a exactly chain basement. Yeah. That's like one of those like backstories that you always kind of wonder how the hell these two people meet and how they strike up this relationship that yeah. I know this is going to be embarrassing when I tell you this, but I turn into a cat every time I fuck someone and I'm going to need you to chain me up, <laughs> you know, in the basement. I think she knew the family from when that, she was real young. Was, and so was she's used to it. That was my and, guess. Yeah. And grows up and she doesn't think it's weird. She just thinks this is what happens. But I never understood that when it's like, we have to separate these kids. You go with a friend of the family. You get out of here. You go to the orphanage fucking 300 miles away. Fucking whip daughters. Ugh. Yeah, what happened there? I don't. That's why I don't. Do they say that that chick was a friend of the family? The black lady was a friend of the. I just think he never. Was. He never identifies. That's her. He who just, she says was, that she's Famali. And did she, she adopt him? She keeps him out of trouble. Yes. 
That's all we know. He fucks her. So if he <laughs> finds her through the mission or something, I don't know. I don't know. The it's... mission to fuck my sister, like. Well, his, mi- his the, church. the church. Oh, okay. There you yeah. go. There's, uh... <laughs> that mission. Well, that'd be an important. Mi- like, I need to fuck somebody without turning into a panther. <laughs> Very important. There's only one other person. Yeah. Which doesn't. Well, I don't know. I guess it's well, got to be brother and sister. Irina ends up, uh, you know, starting to. Uh, well, I, I guess what they, she and Oliver do go off into the country, and that's where things get it's a little crab more. Shack. It is. It is a crab it's shack. A crab it shack. is. They go hunting for crabs. Yeah. Isn't that all you? Would, is that the only reason you want to date as well? Just so they can just be like, look at this. That's a thing. Crab. It's a. You know. It's like what's that? So they can explain. <laughs> what's that? To you? <laughs> you know. That would be annoying. Awesome. It's like, I don't give a shit yeah. what it is. No, it's a maybe, snail. No, maybe that'd be boring for them. They'd be like, <laughs> that's a you know, you know, thing. Oliver, we don't need to know what everything is. Yeah. You could shut well, up Like sometimes. he can't help himself. Be like, <laughs> right, yeah. You know, that tortoise that starfish. over there. Oh, shut up. <laughs> That's like year five of the relationship, right? Funny, when it starts I could go both ways, right? You could like that'd be fun to listen to, but at the same time you'd be like, Oh, what's that one do? Ugh. See, that's why oh, Alice what? and him are made for each other. Right? Right? They're the, well, because she's into the same kind of stuff. She feeds the elephants and knows all the what the crabs are and mm-hmm. what oh, kind and of that, tortoises. And that O'Toole? Yeah. yeah. The, Al- for yeah. sure. They'd have, they like, no, they're like, the dog's sick. They can figure it out together. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need to do anything. And start a detective That's agency. a skill, <laughs> right? Just, you know, what's wrong with the elephant? <laughs> <laughs> she immediately runs behind it, jabs yeah. her arm up the ass. Mm-hmm. It's not it's this. warm. <laughs> it's very warm. Yeah. I still don't know what's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, oh, what a relationship. there's a scene uh, in this, uh, out in this country thing where they uh, end up, uh, uh, Irina goes for a naked stroll in the moonlight. You have oh, to. Indeed. The cat. That's the, it's the animal. animal. It's just... That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I don't think. Well, she develops her cat sense. We get to yeah. see like Indeed. the thermal. Cat eye. Cur- the the thermal. Night, yeah. Thermal vision. Thermal, uh, heat vision. We'll call it that. Night, it feels more like a, diff- a weird version of night vision. It's a cat it's vision. It's weird. Like back in the it's 80s, I remember seeing that like all the time. There was like the wolfen. Uh, oh, wolfen. I remember wolfen I remember vision, the, the wolfen. infrared or whatever. Yeah. Everything and, had to have its eyesight. Yeah. yeah. Nowadays, they usually just do like uh, a. Uh, Fishbowl cam or whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah, you've got like over. Well, we see like stuff with overlaid graphics over uh, pop up menus. What do you call it? Uh, HUD. Uh, HUD heads up displays. Yeah, HUD. Yeah. So they're still doing them, but like after fish the predator, yeah, you know, yeah. Walleye vision. Yeah, whatever, yeah. <laughs> yeah walleye vision. <laughs> or that terrible Alien Three vision, which was just like a fisheye lens or something. It like really that. was. What do you do after that? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, but this wasn't much better because I like I'm like ooh a snake. Colorful. And yeah, it turns green it's and pink. purple. Well, it was and, cool like, because I'm like, the do cats? Are, I don't know anything about how cats cat see, but it was a cool <laughs> idea that, see? like, basically, when she sees the snake, the snake turns like a red yeah. danger, you know, right? Uh, the rabbit turns like a purple or something. Mm. Like, but then it also turns we a eat red. The purple. Yeah. That's, that's my problem with the vision is like, it didn't have any sort of normal. It was just like kaleidoscoping, like, ooh, maybe colors. Things, like, things that moved. Yeah, these things are less interesting, and these things are more interesting. I think it went or red when she was thinking about attacking. I think that was the predator vision. Was mm, when it went maybe, red. Maybe, maybe. But I read it as awakening to the idea that maybe she's actually a cat person. Well, I mean, was there a significant moment that happened between the uh, eating a rabbit, the crab shack, well, eating the rabbit at the crab shack, and but that's when she ate the rabbit, right? Yeah. And then she like scares her boyfriend yeah. by like. That Don't look creepy. at me. That was creepy. <laughs> yeah, it was creepy, but I wish it was shot better. Right? That it was a little weird. Like it I was don't know. funny. Like it shouldn't have been funny, but it was funny. Like Don't look at me. It's the yeah, lamp. I like break up with her right then. Like I oh, don't you know. Would, would you, Travis? Would you? <laughs> Blood you would all over not. her face. You're always she's a freaky yeah. fucking chick, man. She's out there running around naked. No, no, she won't. She won't shack. fuck you, and she has blood on her face. I mean, like this, this is, has to end now. This is intrigue. This is the game. That is right? not this intrigue. Is long, that is dangerous. That's shit. not a game I've ever played. Yeah, he's waiting for the freakiest <laughs> well, sex so in the that's world. That's why you're not sexually obsessed with Natasha. Natasha. Nastasia. Nastasia. Yeah, whatever. Maybe that's how it works. 
That's, that's where it starts. That's where the fire burns. Oh. It starts to consume. The fire it's burns. It's, it's, it's the sense of discovery. It's like, oh, this I never knew I liked so that. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The face and whatnot. <laughs> I know this movie goes into some really weird. Se- okay, well, okay. Before we get to there, right, so so she does go back to. They go back to uh, New Orleans, and the final confrontation with Malcolm McDowell well, occurs. Yes. Okay. Where he shows up and basically lays everything out, you know, right. you know, uh, the, including himself on the bed. Physically yeah. lays oh! himself on the bed. Yeah. Lays it out. Yeah. And she refuses to sleep with him, and then triggers a transformation that ends up he turns into a cat, and Annette O'Toole, or he's going to kill Oliver, and Annette O'Toole comes in and blows him away with a shotgun, which didn't hit Oliver miraculously. No, she well. was aiming true. They're, they're not yeah. the window. Know, These are zoologists. They know what they're doing. Yeah. They can protect themselves against or giant cats. Yeah. When they so shotgun monkeys, not I'm sure. Hit them, just, <laughs> no. You guys know how shotguns work. They well, do. They do. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's one single <laughs> shot directly down the middle, right? That's how that works. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know weapons. But at this moment, so Oliver actually does get to see a person transform into a cat. Mm-hmm. I mean, this it has okay to be it. like, well, I mean, like, it's hard to read John Hurd's, uh, you know, demeanor at this point. But, like, this has to blow your mind. It's very you solemn. see it in a room, like, you go into the room and there's a man there. And then he walks through a shadow and then there's a giant cat yeah. there I don't... trying to kill you. <coughs> He's like... I'm, I'm telling you, I think that was for the audience. I don't think he... Because then you definitely wouldn't have sex with a girl. If you're like, no, your brother turned into a cat. You're going to turn into a cat. But no, he thank you, him. lady. He yelled, Oliver! And then yeah. he started did going. He? Yeah, he yeah. did. Yeah. It he's was like, very garbled, but it was like Oliver. half transformed, but he yeah. gargled about I don't know, because he, yeah. he didn't have any questions. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you <laughs> would say something. Together. So well, immediately afterwards, like... a cat. Yeah. And then you'd have the but, conversation with her directly after, be like, there's a chance I... Okay. Oh, he, but he doesn't get to have that, because she immediately takes That's off... That's she leaves, right? And gets on the plane, or the bus, sorry, yeah, Amtrak, she's taking off. So that's she just leaves town. Yes. Yeah. I think because she realizes she is that where she's like he's not my brother. No. Well, she's how oh, fucking she she solved turns of a cat. Yeah. She takes off and then in yeah. order she's to like, oh, I can't fuck anybody. Well, because she in goes order- to she goes to see um Famali and Famali's oh, right. like you can't love anyone. You gotta you gotta go. You gotta get out of here. And that's when she leaves. Yeah, you're right. And she yeah. knows that. She can only have sex with the person she loves, so she just has to get away from it, right? Yeah. She's not worried about falling in love with another person or somewhere else she goes, where she just knows, nope, I love that guy. Yeah, so there's danger. I am going to have sex with him. Danger here. Gotta get out of here. Yeah. So she goes to the airport. Where she has a dream while falling asleep on the... She falls asleep on the Amtrak and has a dream. That's what that ending, was. Ending number one, we call it. Yeah, How exactly. Was then an that was an ending. It, felt, it was. That dude. was the end of the, Act the, Two. The feeling felt like an ending. <laughs> it me. felt like. Really? It's like I, yeah, oh, I was like, is she dead? Like, what? What just I, happened? Well, I thought like you, you could talk to your cat ancestors in your dreams. Yeah. Yeah. I thought she was joining yeah. Malcolm what? McDowell. Well, that's off how you end the world. Movie. I thought she was going off into cat uh, yeah, world. You see, we are cat Africa. people. We all fuck each other at the cat tree. Mom's here. <laughs> That's all I need. I'm just like, oh, all right. Because right. now I'm confused. So, it, so is mom well, alive back. or is that cat heaven? I think it's cat heaven. But she says she wants to go there, there later. That as a place. Cat she heaven. wants. Well, she says she wants to. You don't want to go to cat heaven. <laughs> I think what if I have to fuck my mom. Well, he <laughs> says he says that you have well, to go back. Don't look at me. I didn't write the stupid myth. This is the worst myth ever. He tells her in the dream that she has to go back because, I mean, otherwise, how do you continue the movie? I suppose, like, I've always seen that. That it's the end of Act 2 and then the next scene we sure. begin Act oh 3. Oh, my but God. What, but it's like, why, how else do you get her to go back to where Oliver is? I don't understand is? why he told her to go back. Does anyone... Anyone because get she she'll has still to accept. become a cat. She yeah, has she to has accept, to accept her because sexuality. Because it's inevitable. It's inevitable. Yeah. Because but it when, has to be with Oliver. When she, she goes him. back, she's suddenly the more confident, aggressive yes. yeah. uh, Irene. Yeah. Turn into a cat. Yeah, which is, uh, you know, she becomes, uh, um, I don't know, what, more alluring in those scenes where she's like, you know, if, I think first she goes after uh, Annette O'Toole at yes. the pool. Annette O'Toole at the pool. Yep. I'll let you guys have That's a, a chapter in my book. It was nice. <laughs> we'll just like a moment of silence is what she means. Yeah. <laughs> Travis has long been a fan of Superman three uh, and to see Lana laying in the all together. 
Beverly. But in AF Beverly from, Marsh. It, right? Yeah. But I'm, that's what I'm saying. They've never uh, seen the Annette O'Toole 48 Hours. Uh, Appreciation Club yeah. uh, is started now. Hamana, hamana, hamana. So, yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a scene that's lifted from the 19... Uh, oh, we're just movie. leaving into it now. Oh, yeah. I can't help it. I'm about to pound on the table. They were, oh, they were nice. They borrow were nice. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were, and just freeze it in this one. It's going to wear out the disc in like yeah. one spot. Um, the one there's spot a, on a Blu-ray is it comes warm. With the D- it comes with a DVD, warm. right? <laughs> I don't think they do anymore. Oh, no. no. There's the internet, my friend. Yep. There's it's not uh, this the place same. called Mr. Skin. I don't know. Like what? So, uh, yeah, but that scene is lifted from the 1942 movie. Both the, uh, the oh, scene yeah, with the, the, uh, the mirror. trolley coming through mm-hmm. that she steps into that's like a big scare in the 42 movie that they tried to oh, was it? Here. I was saying, that got it, me it came out of nowhere it did I'm like, it was, was a little die. too weird yeah I thought she was almost gonna walk into the damn thing well, yeah. I actually do remember them know, showing that scene cause like I've never seen the original camp people but I watched a really good documentary about horror that like really talked about cat people yeah, and showed the trolley scene the, yeah cause that, that's all, all that movie has to go for is like oh it's got the pool scene and the trolley scene, you yeah. know? Two I think they, scary the pool scene basically plays out the same way. She thinks that she's being st- stalked by a leopard. I think in the 42 one, there's maybe the shadow of a leopard on the wall. Actually, and then Arena steps out of the sure. dark. Is that trolley scene, is that infamous for being the first sting? The first sound sting? It's something is that's like that. Why, is that why it's so there's popular? There's something like that, yeah. It was the first, like, you know, stupid like, cat jumping out of a fucking... But the yeah. sound of it yeah. sounds like a cat roaring or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's just like, it's loud. The only thing yeah. that scares you is how yeah. fucking it's, loud it yeah. is. It's jarring and odd. It's just jarring. It was odd yeah. in this. Yeah. It, it works in the 42 odd. version. It didn't seem like that kind of movie. It scared me because I wasn't expecting it, but it doesn't seem like that kind of movie where stuff like that happens. That's right. my problem with this movie. It's like, it's not really trying to be scary. It's too over overtly sexual to be scary. So this why even throw a in movie. a jump? This is an erotic fantasy about oh. the animal in us all. It says right on the box. Right on the box. I think it's, I don't even know if it's an <laughs> the erotic case. fantasy. It says so on the case. I kind of wish there was more. Well, it's not an erotic it. reality. There are people who turn into cats. Well, but I just mean like, I don't know, like... Because by the time, like, that's my interest peaked when she came back and she was sexual. And she's like, I'm going to turn to a fucking panther after this. And I'm like, how sadistic. Like, fuck this bitch. Like, it, but it doesn't work in this movie because it goes against her character. All she did was a stupid dream. No, she comes back. She does fuck it, Oliver. And then she turns into a cat. That's what I'm saying. It goes against her character. She ran away specifically not to do that. Right. Had a dumb dream and yeah. decide, fuck it. I know. Now I'm a bitch. It's a. Uh, what? It a- doesn't make any sense. This is why this movie kind of is all over the place. It just does what it wants to do because it wants to do it. Well, I think it gives. I Don't think make it, excuses. Well, I got to. Because it gives. <laughs> I think. It, the dream is a weak link, true, but I think it gives justification for, like, you know, once she sees all of this, what she really is, mm. then when she comes back, it's like, okay, so now she's just agreed with herself. But to why be doesn't a she just fuck person. anybody, not Oliver? Because the, her, she her, loves him. Well, but obviously not if she's like, fuck it, I'll sacrifice this dude, I'll fuck her, I'll fuck him, and then become a panther and eat his ass. I, well, I was kind of wondering, I don't think like, she, I don't think she ever plans on eating him. I think she can. I think she thinks she can control it enough. Because is that what's going on in that scene where she, after they have well, sex, she, like she didn't turn <laughs> into a panther during the sex. Right. Well, right. oh, you wouldn't. She, it's like, it seems it could be like an hour later or whatever. He's asleep. Okay. So 15 At least the time later, for a cigarette. Later. It's yeah. three minutes later. <laughs> three probably. minutes later. <laughs> he's asleep and she's that's what that awake. Was, oh, that's later. <laughs> what are you just tying her up later? It's like, come on, dude. What are you tying her up for? This is going to be like a 10 minute thing. Yeah, yeah, that's where it goes. Like, so okay, it's well, true. Just so we can get to the end of the movie here. The uh, the idea though that you know once she does actually accept who she is, turns into a panther, and then you know there's the scene where Good I guess transformation. this is where you know I mean I'm listening to them watching. It's like, is this the end of the movie? It's going to be the American Werewolf in London ending where she's out on a bridge. You know, the cat yeah. finally is out on the bridge. We've had the. Uh, not Rick Baker, obviously, but the transformation, latex, bladders, you know, moving Eyeballs, things under the skin yep. and whatever. Uh, Boob sucking in. But she escapes. She jumps off the bridge and into the water. And I remember seeing this on television. And the TV version actually did end on the bridge. 
Really? Really? That was the end of the movie. Because, like, when I later saw it, I'm like, well, obviously, because nothing that happens in the subsequent scene in the uh, cabin can be aired on television. Right. Right. Because that's when it gets into bondage and shit like that. She basically says... She's just fully nude, getting tied up really slowly. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's like... I guess they could. They could just cut, like, (coughs) to close-ups of the cops shooting... That's find another thing of the thing yeah. dead, and then you could cut right to the I think autopsy. It like stops with the panther, like slow motion, going rah, then it like stops or something like that, and then it cuts to the zoo and it jumps right over the uh, the scene in, oh, in the uh, with the bondage yeah. where Oliver agrees. I guess like this is the thing. It's like he is so in love with her that he can't kill her. Right, so right? set me free. But She's he wants like to just keep kill me. her. Because I turned into a cat. And he's like, no, no, no. Then she's like, okay, well, fuck me one more time and turn me into a cat and set me free so I can live with my kind, which we find out in the coda. It means that he takes her back to the zoo and puts her in a cage and he gets to Once be with. I think that reiterates uh, then, my idea of man wanting to keep her sexuality down. You know, he gets to turn into a cat and put her in a cage. Yeah. You know? Her unbridled sexuality turns her into a cat woman, and then he locks her up. That is kind of, like, fucked up. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's like, is it a happy ending, or is this kind of like... I don't get it, yeah. No, because yeah. she's in a cage, and it seems his, sad for everybody. the woman he loves is a cat, and it's, it's just well, fucked. But he, he kisses Annette for, uh, O'Toole right yeah, but, before he goes, so he's obviously in a relationship, like, I'll see yeah. you at home, honey, like, but then I'll go visit my, like, untapped sexual fucking, like, like yeah. love. Whatever that is. Beezer. From something out of his pocket. Bacon. Pets oh, then, yeah. David Bowie. <laughs> which is the, uh, you away. But just the fact that, you know, the, the Paul cat, like, couldn't get anywhere near it. It was vicious and yeah. tearing apart. And the Irina cat still recognizes, you know, who he is and that she's still in love with him. Yeah. Because she's accepted that fate. Yeah. Paul didn't. She doesn't want to go through all of it, so she's like, I will just be a docile. Cat. She's yeah. in love with him. Anymore. She can't fuck him anyway, so she's just a cat with him. Yeah. yeah. But it's she, weird. when she's a cat, does she have animal passion? No. For him? I don't think so. Because she just loves him anyway. Well, she has the desire to kill, I guess. That's what you have when you're the cat, right? You want to murder. I guess so. You want to tear things apart with your teeth. Do you want to, or do you think you have to because well, you want to be just back a as a human? It's I nature. Think, well, no, I think that, that was the point of the whole thing, because the whole movie, Paul and Famali were both telling her that she was this creature that couldn't be controlled, that she has this animal, like... Uh, ferociousness Instinct. in her that she that she has to run away from the things that she loves and I don't think she believed that and I think this was her saying that you don't have to be that way right that's what I got from it yeah no I think that's it right yeah it's like she yeah and the dream is the link but or the whatever the moment the the changes yeah. her between the person who doesn't believe it and the person who accepts it yeah that is kind of a weak link. I mean, I get visually, <laughs> visually it looks cool. Visually, visually it's like, oh. Uh, there was a, uh, I've seen a deleted scene where originally they had when, you know, they, uh, uh, Paul walks up to the tree where the pan- the panther's like lounging. Yeah. And she's like, that's mother. Uh, originally, they had a matte painting of like a, it was like a leopard or a, with a, a woman's head. I've seen it. It's the exact same shot. Like Him leaning there and there, yeah. And it was like. Oh, thank God they didn't use that. And they went with the, uh, you know, the the panther instead. Because it looks really, really, it looked really bad. It's on the DVD. And I think you can find it online. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll see if I can post that on Facebook. You were talking about the David Bowie song. Yeah. That closes out the movie and does the, okay, so here's the other thing. Uh, I have been a lifelong fan of uh, Giorgio Moroder, the uh, film composer, the currently Guess there's like David this uh, move toward what would it be like dark wave or synth pop or something like this and you yeah. know it's like it's a kind of come Stranger on Stranger Things is kind of like yeah it's come on the back of like Daft Punk or something like that right yeah pretty much which then they go back and kind of acknowledge Marauder as a source and you know an inspiration for their stuff it's like when watching this it's like now I'm seeing a lot of movies and like Stranger Things and all this that are trying to 
or uh, emulate the musical style that this guy did, like back in doing the eighties. So Nicholas Winding Refn. Yeah, exactly. And the Cliff Just Martinez and all that. This is the original, or... like kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Sorcerer, Tangerine Dream, and all those. Um, kind the guest. Of, yeah. yeah. Transformers, the movie that what's his name Vince DiCola. I can't. Remember. I don't know if that's his name, but that fucking soundtrack is awesome, <laughs> dude. <laughs> what we're saying the vintage <laughs> ones versus <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the modern. And the so David Bowie wrote the lyrics of the song uh, "Putting Out the Fire with Gasoline," which was then uh, it's awesome, and it was no. then used like in uh, used yeah. in "Inglorious Bastards" by it Quentin was Tarantino. It? Yeah. It was yeah. when she's getting ready to burn it down and put on a red dress and mm-hmm. put makeup because she's on. got green eyes. And says yeah. The, yeah. So I'm one of those rare people I hate Bowie. I hate him. Oh, I, hate him. I mean, I'm not his biggest fan, but you know. yeah, I like this song. That's a, I mean, that's like probably he my rests. favorite David Bowie. That or the one from Lost Highway. Always soundtracks it is. Oh, yeah. I don't care about anything else. Really? Yeah, fans. You like Space Oddity? <laughs> not really. really. But then again, like I said, I'm not like, uh, you know. He doesn't like music. <laughs> <laughs> I have an ear for the stuff that I like. Loves Jackie Wilson. Yeah, and the George <laughs> Marauder stuff that I can't remember. Uh, okay, so Loves does that Jackie take us Wilson. to the end of uh, Cat People? Yeah. I guess so. I think so. Okay. I think it's, uh, I think it's, All right. It's time for a mailbag. So you can write into us uh, on facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can also write to us at uh, on Twitter at Sat Freak Show or the old fashioned way, Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. Uh, oh. So we're going to call our mailman, Igor. Where are you, sir? Igor. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. Hey, put that down. He was trying to take care of people back to his. Don't what? Ooh. Oh. 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 And he's. Oh, don't he's gonna yeah. leave like the cat. It's just, Maybe eh. we should let him. I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't like get to do that much, yeah. does he? Uh, Sometimes. Well, you never know what's going on back there. All right, so uh, G Money writes in and says, David Bowie and Nastasha Kinski create the sexuality in this movie. A perfect mesh of eroticism and horror, like a modern Wolfman slash Dracula. He also says, for fans of The Return of the Living Dead 3, which we did a couple yeah. episodes ago, he says, I place Children of the Corn 3 in the same vein of awesome 90s gore. Uh, Michaela Tyson writes in and says, I love the original 1942 cat people. So I have avoided this loose remake. Should I keep avoiding it? Oh, it, it I, Travis is about to say, I say, Michaela, you got to stick with us through to Come the wrap ups, which are coming up right after the mailbag. <laughs> Man, Nick Hammond writes in. <laughs> the, you said mailbag. <laughs> the mailbag. Nick Hammond writes in and says, not pertaining to this movie. I've never seen it, but I have been binge listening the podcasts I've missed over the last month, and I love the top ten picks by you guys. Well, thanks for getting with the program there, Nick. Uh, He says, so I thought I'd give my list. Well, okay. Nick is kind of an honorary freak show member because he's been on this show a number of times before. So his top ten horror movies. Number ten, Saw. Number nine, Trick or Treat. Number eight, Blair Witch. Number seven, Paranormal Activity. Number six, Scream. Number five, House of a Thousand Corpses. Number four, Evil Dead, the original. Number three, The Conjuring. Number two, Halloween. And number one, A Nightmare on Elm Street. I was going to say, we were going pretty modern there for a minute. I was say, yeah, the oldest movie there is uh, Halloween 1978. All right, then. Top ten horror movies. Right? To hear our top ten horror movies, you got to go back, and I can't remember which episodes they are. No, our October I... episodes. Or whatever. Yes. Yeah. It was... Just go to the month of October and you'll uh, return to the Living Dead 3. Bad Seed was Bad yours. Seed. Cabin, Cabin in the Woods in the was woods mine. And Dracula. And Dracula. 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 All right. What? So that brings us to the wrap up. So we're going to give our Aww. final thoughts. You're going to find out what we each individually thought of Cat People. Aww. You hear that sound? Yeah. It's oh, a Bartler coming. The hour has come, sirs. Thanks, Lurk. My, nice. my back is always to this. Like, I don't think I've seen Lurk. <laughs> he has a light footstep. Does he? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so Travis is going to start us out. Travis, what do you think of cat people? It stinks. 
Uh, no, yeah, this movie's stinks. All right, add another, <laughs> add another check to the wall. That's 1,365 movies that Travis does not like. Uh, Should we change the title of this podcast no, to Travis you're, you're Hates pro- Movies? You guys is probably, well, I, okay. I, <laughs> Listener, you tell us the last movie that Travis didn't pick that he liked. What are you talking about? Uh, I was curious. All right, man, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> fucking people. You liked man. mine last week. Fucking people, man. Stepford Wives. You liked mine last week. Diddy. I even like Cabin in the Woods. I just gave it a shitty review because there's shit, there's shit that pisses me off about the movie. You guys just fucking like anything. It's just like, if it's a movie, you guys, like, we didn't have to sit in front of nothing. <laughs> like, good movie, guys. Yeah, with this because to me this doesn't have a lot of sexuality. It doesn't have a good murder mystery. It doesn't it has nothing that interests me in this movie. This didn't have sexuality. It had naked people, but it didn't have sexuality. Not in my fucking mind. Not the raw, unbridled sexual heat no. of Nastasha Kinski. No. no, it had this incestuous like ugh, creep factor, but uh. No, it was. I didn't think it was a. It, to me, it wasn't shot sexy. It wasn't. It's just not a sexy movie. Your remarks during the movie would suggest otherwise. <laughs> there was a lot of bush on screen. <laughs> that does not make a sexy movie. Just there's bush on. Funny that was uh, Roger Ebert's exact review. <laughs> it's right here on the back. There's a lot of bush on screen. There's a lot of bush. Three and a half out of four bushes. That's I'm perfect. Telling you. I'm telling you. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just this movie doesn't do it for me. Uh, I mean, I've always stayed clear of this movie. I knew what this movie was going to be, except for the fucking incest thing. Um, I was saying to Sean outside, it's like, dude, if there's a, if, if there's a good enough story, they would have made it a werewolf movie. <laughs> they don't make cat movies <laughs> if it's a good story. If it's a good story, they'll just make it a werewolf movie. Is the cat story the female werewolf? Guys turn into wolves and women turn into cats. Well, but they, I mean, but when do they even do that? Like, I mean, how many cat stories do we have? Cat people, sleepwalkers. That's more than you would expect, right? Not really, too. <laughs> I mean, it has something to do. Cat, yeah, female cat, cat people. Do I know? I don't know what it has to uh, do with. Curse, and they're not even the cat like. People. They're, they're cat people, but they're not like cat people. Right? They're like they turn into yeah. fucking cougars. I mean, yeah, they turn into a, a, a panther or whatever. Fuck. And uh, but I don't know. It's yeah, not cat like a... enthusiasts, like Catwoman, Black Panther, cat enthusiasts. Can the remake just be called Cat Enthusiasts? <laughs> cat enthusiasts. <laughs> not as sexy as cat people. Just yeah. we like cats. Like we like just twenty minutes of people. Just cat uh, people. It's I all love my old cat. women who have yes. housefuls of cats. Yes. Aww. So I mean, I guess that's my problem. Like a werewolf movie always has some sort of a body count some sort of a mystery going on right where i felt like this movie didn't have that you knew right from the get-go like oh he's a cat person he just did like a 70s spider-man leap onto the bedpost (laughs) you know (laughs) and uh i don't know yeah no was that was that it that was it (laughs) fuck you guys i don't like this fucking movie (laughs) there he is oh check (laughs) <laughs> Why don't you people show some good fucking movies and I'll start re- reviewing some good fucking movies. <laughs> <laughs> they can't all be monster in the closet. I know, oh. right? <laughs> they can't. Uh, fuck you, I like that movie. Uh, I know. High five. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, cat people. Um, I uh, I did enjoy this. I didn't uh, know what I was getting into. Um, this has been discussed here at... Uh, the freak show in Colin's house for quite a while, actually, back in the days when Tom was a frequent member of the podcast. Um, oh, so it was good this, to finally has see Tom it. seen this movie. I think so. I'm not sure. I th- he keeps saying cat people. Like yeah. he would just shout cat I people. I think that's in what happened to your randomly. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he's seen it yeah. in some form or another. But uh, I liked it. Like I said before, aside from the uh, uh, incestuous parts, it's a it's a sexy movie. Um, uh, no, I, I, question. I I, I really want to know. Did the incestuous parts defer you guys from the other sexy parts? No. No. Didn't, because it's didn't only Malcolm McDowell. 
Like, I associate the incestuous parts with Malcolm McDowell. Yeah, he's Once like he goes villain, away, right, or he's yeah. not in the picture, yeah. everything else is sexy. Like it didn't, I don't it think, didn't kill the mood for you. Just like, I don't yeah. think just a nude right. girl is sexy. That's not all it takes. It's just like, ah, she's naked. Unless There's, it's a netto tool. This is sexy. Yeah. <laughs> then yeah, you were, that's pretty, you were pretty, pretty riled up about a netto tool. Because I've been, cause <laughs> I've been looking at that woman since I was, like, seven. I guess I've always wondered, what's her tits like? What's her, you know... If you're wondering that for so long, and then you never know when it's gonna, you know, I didn't expect to see her tits tonight. <laughs> <laughs> they were just there. It was a magical it was a night. So Surprise, something yeah. extra star so for stars. Cat people. So something, yeah, you know, a little something so, for everybody in there. Saying. So yeah, well, Travis's Annette opinion: Tool. this movie fucking sucks. Caveat: Annette O'Toole's tits. Annette O'Toole's tits. <laughs> I mean, which I hear is in 48 hours. So, so maybe, maybe 48 hours is a better movie. <laughs> I could just get her tits from that and Nick Nolte comedy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, sexy movie. Um, I, there's, uh, sp- one scene I liked in particular, and uh, this may sound weird when Ed Bagley Jr. gets killed uh, to me, the way it's after he gets his arm ripped off, it's kind of a, especially when the blood kind of rushes over her shoes at the end yeah. and her just, white shoes, her white shoes yeah. and the white floor. It's kind of beautiful the yeah, way that shot agreed. and just the the red blood on the white floor and the way that whole scene goes. Like, I really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. That was her getting her womanhood. Did you get that? I'll skip it. Um, but, uh, I, I recommend it. Um, especially if you, if you've never seen cat people before, I, I think there's something in here for you. You'll, you'll get something out of it. <laughs> there's <something laughs> there's some, maybe, I mean, maybe one L, I mean, maybe some you'll like, Malcolm, bake stuff, so maybe you'll uh, like Malcolm McDowell and what he does in this yikes. movie. I don't, I'm not here to judge you. I'll judge you a little bit. I'll we'll judge you a little Maybe there's a lot of black trench. You know, when movie. Malcolm McDowell shows up, some fucked up rapey shit. Seriously? Can happen. <laughs> the guy's seriously? never just going to have a loving relationship with anybody. Is he contractually anybody. obligated to have this weird, creepy shit in his he movies? Maybe like, he feels like that's the only way he can get to touch women. Like, I think maybe yeah. it's the only way he thinks he can act. It's like there must be something wrong. Wrong with me. Well, they just cast him as the villain all the time, That's right? Just, he was so good. At, he's typecast. Yeah, right fucking Clockwork Orange just fucked his whole career. Yeah, but uh, yeah, everybody does pretty good in this movie. Uh, I recommend it. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Uh, I recommend Cat People. I would watch that again. Um, I, I knew what we were getting into when I saw the poster for this movie. I, I looked ahead of time. I was like, I wonder if you can judge this movie by the poster, and you can. You really. What can. does that mean? It's going to be a, wet, sexy. It's going to be a movie Sexily wet. for um, guys, <laughs> basically. This movie is not for girls. There's, there's Species some, is for guys. Maybe some women <laughs> find this movie sexy. There is. This movie is not for girls. It's okay. not. It's not mm. sexy. Sorry, you, girl getting hit on, by, hit on by your brother, and it's just not sexy. If you ignore them. Do God, uh, way, do we look Japanese? Uh, that's where everybody's Guys focusing. hitting on their sisters are, is not like something that's for guys. There's much more of the movie focused on the relationship between <laughs> Oliver and Arena. No, I have God to agree sake. with her, dude. That whole incest thing just blew. I'm like, this is they, the they, worst. They come with it out of the, the gate, so it kind of sticks with you. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, but I'm done after that. I can get like, past no. it. No, um, I, I thought, I thought the acting was actually. Pretty good. They had a lot of um, up and covers that we recognized from a lot of different things. Um, John Hurd was great. I kind of had a crush on him in this. I will give him that. He was he was kind of cool. Um, yeah, I can't say I liked it though. I, I, it was just too weird. It was too honestly. It was too all over the place. It wasn't the sexual stuff that got me. It was too all over the place. There was so many jumps in between scenes, and it was just weird, man. It was just fucked up and. The, just the little stuff, like John Hurd declaring his love to her after like three days, and I'm like, dude, this is so weird. Like yeah. it was just way too all over the place. Um, so in that aspect, I, I can't say that I liked it. The sexual stuff didn't really bother me. It was it was, was what it was. Annette O'Toole had good tits. She did. Hey. I'll give you that. Um, I've never seen a bad one. Guys might <laughs> guys might enjoy this for a, a watch. Girls, I don't know if that's your thing. You might, but. Yeah, I don't recommend it personally for anyone, but there you go. I think this movie harkens back to an age in the 80s, you know, which I don't know what, uh, you know, uh, where eroticism in films, you could actually have like, you know, adult movies Mm -hmm. in in even your, you know, uh, monster fantasy movies, right? I mean, basically, because that's what we're saying. It is. It's goofy. There's people who turn into cats, right? 
But by adding that layer of uh, erotic intrigue, because I think that's what it is. It's like Irina's mysterious. She's sexy. Uh, she's this just is the trailer, right? <laughs> <laughs> or should be. Are they gonna hire me? She's mysterious. She's, she's sexy. Mysterious and sexy. She's a uh, kitty cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meow. Yeah. The uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It. Uh, I think. It convincingly, you know, like it, it's a movie that feels like it takes itself seriously enough that you believe this whacked out crazy shit while it's happening. Um, it's a horror movie. I mean, you know, that there's it just not, you know, as Travis is pointing out, it's not necessarily scary, but it's dealing with, you know, a mo- there's it's a monster movie and it's dealing with like you know the collapse of a sense of identity or the discovery of a new monstrous identity which is you know uh i guess the uh, analogy loss, for man. you know yeah a young virginal girl discovering her, her uh, uh, propensity for <laughs> sexual lust you know <laughs> i love that kind of stuff i mean oh, like who does it right do. yeah I, it, it, it <laughs> don't scary judge to me. That's right. like, it just needs to be, this man it just needs to be handled that that way, is an adult right? thing yeah i think <laughs> because that's why like this is this movie's a goddamn classic in my mind i mean like it's one of those things where like i think not necessarily that it's this perfect. word comes out of your mouth. But so. it works <laughs> on so many levels. The the casting is like spot on perfect. All the minor people do fantastic work. Yeah. That's um good. I think it's also helped by a little bit of nostalgia, the fact that like now I go back and I'm like, holy fuck, I know it, like John Larroquet shows up in this yeah. movie. Frankie Fiazon was in uh or Faison yeah. was in Silence of the Lambs. It's like you can, you know, see where everybody uh, went on to after this movie doing um, his best shaft. Yeah, <laughs> it has a visual style. I think like even I'm staring at the poster of this movie was just kind of like burnt orange kind of look. But I think that That's also kind of adds to like the kind of it's not like a fleshy heat, but it's like you know something about a the sexual fleshy heat. heat. Right? Yeah, fleshy the, it's heat. definitely it's, it's fleshy flash dancing <laughs> looking, right? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah covered so, is yeah, yeah, with the water. It dry. looks like you're in a steel mill for some reason. It's a, it's <laughs> and there's produced, water and she's naked, and it's, and it's like, produced by Jerry Bruckheimer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, it was like twenty music Bruckheimer. videos in the 1980s, wasn't it? I'm like, telling you, that's naked what, water and naked water, and like there's there's molten lava to the side for some reason. You're in a steel. God, the 80s were sexy. It's a, it, it is a really very, bad. very sexy movie. Hot, sexy movie. Hot. I mean, and Nastasha Kinski is a uh, specimen, right? Who's undraped concur. often in this film, which I think, you know, also like when you saw Species, I think the first time, or Life Force for me, it's like, uh, wow, uh, there's, you know, just, I don't know, makes you feel uh, uh, good to be warm alive. Inside. <laughs> Right in your masculinity. <laughs> and like, what else has she done? And I'm asking for a friend. Uh, she <laughs> was, in, <laughs> well, she was uh, in a Roman Polanski movie called Tess. This big, okay, like, that makes you know, a lot of sense. Oh Jesus! And, uh, and she also dated the Paul Schrader during this. Yeah, she dated Roman Polanski oh, during. Yeah. Jesus, oh, of course, fucking she did. scandalous. <laughs> and uh, the last thing that I remember seeing her in, she had blonde hair, and she was in a movie with Wesley Snipes called Drop Zone. Drop, she, that's oh, from Drop Zone? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. Jesus. I used to watch that movie all the time. Yeah. I love that movie. She does not take her clothes off. She doesn't. Because she learned she early. Doesn't. Right? This is the <laughs> she song. learned early on. Like, God damn it. I yeah. love Drop Zone. Well, she doesn't like this movie. She thinks it oh. was manipulative and all this other stuff. I'm like, well, you know, you broke up with the guy who made it, so you're going to say that. Yeah, you know? I was going to say. There seems... Yeah, because she comes off, I think, very well in it. You know, I mean, she yeah. uh, she is a cat person. Person, you know, I mean, just in her <laughs> the grace of her movements and her physique and all this. I mean, it's you know, mm-hmm. but she doesn't have a lot of character. All she it's is supposed mystery. to do is get naked in this movie. No, I can see why she like, feels I like can, a little like. But I, I, see I thought the, she was the weakest of all the actors in this movie. She was the weakest of all the characters. She yeah. had nothing I mean, to do but wander around. Yeah, that's I'm like. What I disagree a hundred percent with all you guys, and I got to say that because this is my wrap up thing, and you already had your shot. Sorry. Yeah, no, I mean like it does feel like. I mean, I, I, 
empathize with her being the you know at least for the first half until you know then we switch and empathize with oliver in the second portion mm-hmm. of the movie but to me it works it fires on all those cylinders where like you're seeing this girl who's conflicted about like her own inner life i mean a lot of times when they say we well, you know women who are models or something and i'm assuming that she started off in a model oh yeah as a model you know it's like <laughs> The the least experienced actor sometimes in these things. So, but I I think she conveys. I mean, as an actor, everything that the emotional states that she goes through in that movie like come across. So it's like I think that she does the job. You know, it's not like there's times where I'm like, oh, she was supposed to be giving us this emotion, but it's not quite there. I mean, like it seems like. I'm feeling what she is conveying whenever mm. she's doing it. So that's why I'm like, I think her performance works, you know? I'm not saying the performance don't work. I just think <coughs> oh, the, character, the character, there's nothing there. <laughs> she's somebody that doesn't know her past, doesn't know who, I mean, she just doesn't, doesn't know, know fucking anything. It's just like, I don't believe in that person. I don't believe like, hey, Colin, where'd you go? I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know. My brother found me. I don't know. I'm like, she okay. Has, so you don't, never does that in the movie. But she has, yeah, it sounded like but it. she has like a whole backstory on where she came from. Just the brother doesn't want to hear it, but she's talking about like her, you know, adopted parent, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, I think it's a fine film. The only thing tonight, as I was watching it, you know, I've never experienced this before because every time I watch this movie, it's like this <laughs> He's works. Been alone. Like, yeah, but it, works, <laughs> it works. No, actually, I have seen this with other people and it, it worked okay. Um, but this time around, We're I was aware hands you know, above the cover. <laughs> sometimes you're in a group situation and you can kind of read the the way that the group is experiencing the movie, and it was like. Oh, this is playing as kind of long, you know, this time around. And it's like, I think, you know, the editing rhythms of this movie are, you know, what they were in 1981. Things take more time to develop. They go into more detail of like, this person's going to walk all the way up the stairs and stuff like that. So the editing rhythm is out of step with movies today. So I think that kind of maybe makes it feel, I mean, it is like two hours, but uh, then some of it seemed misplaced. Like I think the transformation scene would have played out way better earlier in the movie. I think by that time we were just like, no, Oh, you okay. gotta wait because that's like, but you know. movies hinging on like, but, is but she going to turn into like, a cat woman? But no. it wasn't exciting. Uh, You're just like, yeah, she's turning. Cause you out. know, that's what I'm saying. This movie doesn't have the thing. Other like werewolf movies either have like, are they, a werewolf or it's like this movie doesn't have any goal it's searching for you're like what am i waiting for is she gonna fuck oliver that's what you're waiting for and then is she gonna kill oliver afterwards like i mean you're going into the movie with the assumption that she is a legitimate right but that's what you're waiting for you're waiting to see what she's gonna do oliver you're not waiting for the transformation that should have come earlier because it was just kind of overshadowed that's what I think, anyway. Yeah. Sorry, it's your wrap-up. But she can't transform until she has sex with Oliver. Right, yeah. And I think, I don't know, I was waiting for, like, they kept delaying that moment. Yeah, I don't know. So Yeah. Because yeah. um, what if the Wolfman can only kill one dude towards the end of the movie? And that is it going to kill him? Is it going to? It's like, no, that sucks. No, but you're, that's why you get another. You're talking about, you Panther. have, yeah, you have the other guy, the Paul, other guy. out murdering everyone in the, the, the woman that he takes back to the, from the cemetery. But it's not the character. The hooker, you don't even care and, about it. Uh, and Ed Begley Jr. You, you don't do care. have a body count in this movie. Yeah. And a gore. And you a don't gore. care. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's a don't. fantastic film. <laughs> I wholeheartedly recommend it. Cat people, seek it out. It's on a collector's edition Blu-ray from Shout Factory right now. Mm-hmm. So next week, that's it for cat people. Sorry, cat people, we have to leave you. And next week, we're going to watch a movie that Travis is going to choose for us. Travis, what are we going to watch next week? We're going to see some real sexy shit in Cool World. <laughs> That's some steamy. Uh, I know if Hollywood, cartoon. she could. Hollywood, if she could. Yeah. Not this Holly. Sorry, no, that was the me. tag for not Yeah, me. okay, yeah. Uh, so that's, <laughs> that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the basement is going dark.